welcome to Access Rhode Island and its program, Kids Count. My name is Elizabeth Burke Bryant. I'm Executive Director of Rhode Island Kids Count, a children's policy and advocacy organization that works to improve the health, education, safety, and economic well-being of Rhode Island's children. Today, as with every program, we get to dive into a very important issue affecting Rhode Island's children and youth. And today's program is on the critical topic of access to public education. We're focusing in on an issue that has, coming up, has come up in the city of Providence that has to do with walking to school. Every district in the state has policies that are called transportation policies that um, give guidelines for how far children should be expected to walk to and from school um, without busing kicking in. And we are so delighted to have two key leaders on the program today that have really been raising awareness about this issue. First, on my right, I'd like to introduce Diane Gonzalez. Diane is a leader with the Providence Student Union. Thank you for being on the program, Diane. Thank you for having me. I also should say that Diane is a student at Central High School in Providence. Yes. So thanks again for your involvement and for your leadership and being on the show. And um, on the other side of Diane is my good friend, Bernie Boudreau. He is executive director of Serve Rhode Island. Great to have you on the program, Bernie. Thanks for inviting me. Well, Bernie, why don't we start out with you for just a little bit of context for this issue. As I said at the outset, um, every school district, including the city of Providence public schools, has a policy about what students are able to um, get free busing and what students have to walk to school. Can you give us a lay of the land about first what most districts policies state? Yeah, well, it's just a little bit of background. Um, I'm with the mayor's children's youth cabinet um, attendance work group. And uh, it's been around for about a year and a half. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we try to figure out what's the problem with absenteeism, you know, K through 12 in Providence. Uh, and, uh, you know, we were focusing on high school, this one particular meeting in November. and. Uh, Central High um, has 60% uh, uh, chronic absenteeism. That means 10% uh, or more days they're absent. Mm -hmm. And so that is like the majority of the kids who go to Central. And so uh, one of the members of the group said, um, you know, uh, when I tell the kids who are walking from Chad Brown to Central, they ought to walk together. I said, they actually walk from Chad Brown. She said, sure. They, you know, Providence has a three-mile policy. So... I asked the committee chairs if they would let me take an assignment to kind of research this a little bit. And I said, I want to talk to students like Diane, and, uh, but I want to get some data. So I called and uh, researched the school districts and found out that, um, that most districts for high schoolers have a, a mile and a half to two mile policy, after which you're able to get a bus uh, pass or uh, a yellow bus ride. And uh, then I looked at Boston and Springfield and Worcester and, and uh, Hartford and Fall River, and they're all at two miles. And for high school students, because yeah, usually Springfield's it's a little bit a longer a for high school, yeah. Yeah. And so why is Providence at three? So I, I looked at about 10 other similar-sized districts in, in the northern latitudes across the United States. Nobody had a three-mile policy. So I, I said, well, that's really important information. Why are we punishing uh, our, our students. So why, why are we giving that extra disadvantage to our our Providence, uh, you know, high schoolers? Uh, take that away. I mean, there's enough challenges as as it is to to do well in school. So anyway, uh, we got that information. Then we looked at um, uh, attendance data, January through mid February, and uh, four Providence high schools, and we took five outside school districts in in Rhode Island: East Providence, uh, West Warwick, Woonsocket, Cumberland. In Bristol Warren, and saw that from comparing January, February to, to May, those outside districts had no real difference in attendance, only one, one percentage point. For Providence High Schools, there was, um, you know, 17 percentage points difference. So there's double the rate of absenteeism in the wintertime. So obviously distance from school is a factor in the wintertime, and it's a hardship. And of course, I met Diane in the, in the Providence Student Union, and they really said, told us real stories about real people, what it's like to, to have to walk three miles. So Diane, this is a policy that applies to you, is that right? Yes. So every, uh, for students such as yourself that don't live within three miles of your high school, you're expected to walk both ways to school 
um, with no help with buying a rip to pass or with having a yellow bus show up at your corner. Is that right? Yes. And so this is affecting you and a lot of other students you know. Is that right? It is. And one of the reasons I bet you got involved with Providence Student Union is that you've enjoyed coming together with other students to really work on issues that matter to you. Yes. So what made you, let's just start with you and your interest in, in getting involved. What made you join Providence Student Union? Well, the transportation policy has affected me in a very big way. I have 29 absences and 39 tardies because I only get two 10 roadies for a month. And what's and a 10 roadie, just so people 10 know? 10 roadie is a bus pass that lets you get 10 rides. Mm -hmm. And that's only enough for two weeks of school. And the rest of the month, I have to hustle or find a way to get to school or walk to school. And when it's like bad weather, when it's raining or snowing, I just don't bother to go. I mm -hmm. mean, I don't want to get sick. And so sometimes is there snow on the roadways? And it is. Snow on the sidewalk? There's snows on the sidewalk, and I have to walk in the street. Mm -hmm. And I really want to be in school. I mean, I enjoy being in school. And about how long does it take you to walk the three miles on the days that you walk to school? It takes me about an hour. Mm -hmm. And then you go through your long school day, sometimes other activities, and then it's sort of face it is facing you at the other end of the day it is. that you have to walk home. It is. Um, and have you heard stories of other students that have had this policy have an effect on their studies? Yes. Um, in PSU, we've talked about many students. And we also talked about my story. And this transportation policy has actually ruined some future goals I had. Like, for example, last month, I applied to Upward Bound. It's this program that helps me with college. And I was excited, you know. I was excited that it would help me, you know. And a month after, I found out that I didn't get in. And when I had the interview, the lady asked me, do you really think you're going to get into this program with all the work you've missed? Because I didn't have a bus pass and I did want to be in school. It's just, I didn't have enough rides. And my mom can't afford to give me $4 for every school day. And you know, I'm afraid that this will ruin my school records and my reputation. I really want to go to college, it's one of my goals. And so what you were just saying, Diane, is that it, um, on a regular city bus, it costs $2 each way, yes. which is $4 per day. Mm -hmm. um, and yet if you lived, um, I'm trying to think about how, how far it is, but if you lived two and a half miles, it is two you half. would be able to have help, right? Yes. Um, no, anything beyond three, three miles. miles. Sorry, I got that yeah. confused. So if you lived three and a half miles, yeah, you away. Yeah, and there's 3.1 or 3 right on the money. Mm -hmm. but you want to tell her about how they measure the distance? It's only, it's the radius. It's not really, like, they it's haven't not as experienced. The crow flies, as they say. Yes, they haven't experienced walking exactly three miles. Mm -hmm. and because lots of times there's things that you encounter yes, and you have to take exactly. detours around things. There's also, like, dangerous neighborhoods, gangbangers. I mean, um, I'm for, I'm, I live in a nice neighborhood, so I don't have to worry about that. But in PSU, there's some members that he actually told us his story, how he was afraid of gang, bang um, gang bangers because he lived in the uh, projects like around Hartford. Mm -hmm. So, yes. So um, it, when you're thinking about the work that you're doing with the Providence Student Union, um, have you been to any of the school board meetings to talk about this issue? Yes, actually, we had a meeting, I think it was about a month ago, mm -hmm. with the school board, and we gave our speeches, we told them our personal stories, and they approved, but they told us that they don't have enough funding mm -hmm. to provide us a bus passes. bus passes. So we actually made the Walk in Our Shoes Challenge. Well, let's have you tell us about that, and then we'll have Bernie fill us in. What was the Walk in Our Shoes All Challenge? Right. So we invited the people that we know would help us change this you know, solve this problem. We invited RIPTA officials, school board members, government officials, candidates running for mayor, and uh, Superintendent Lucy, and you're, you were there too. I yeah. appreciate it. Oh, it was a pleasure. <laughs> yes, and we actually want them to experience what we have to go through just to get to school in the morning. Yeah. And we were happy to see them, you know, we even gave some of them book bags so they could have the full experience. 
And I'm pretty sure that by the end of the walk, they were exhausted. I was so happy to see them so surprised. Like, I guess they were saying, wow, this is what a student has to go through. Yeah. Can I ask you something, Lucy? Sure, yes. How did you feel after the walk? I felt tired, Diane. <laughs> I felt tired, and I felt um, that it was a great, great way for you to have people really experience the issue that you were talking about. Yeah. Um, it was interesting for me because the walk went right by the house that I grew up in, practically. <laughs> the street, mm. at least. Um, I grew up on Lindhurst Avenue right off Smith Street. Mm -hmm. And because we walked from around Fruit Hill Avenue down... We walked right by my street. And when I was um, growing up, I went to classical high school and I got a bus pass that allowed me to take the 57 bus right to downtown. And in inclement weather, I'd be able to transfer and take the bus up to classical. Mm -hmm. If it was nice out, I might walk up Westminster. But the point was I didn't have any, I, or I would have rides sometimes. I didn't have any of those barriers that you have. So yes. it was very personal to me to think about that. And as you say, there's many students who have you know, much busier streets than Smith Street, mm -hmm. and they're going past Route 10, or they're in um, all sorts of, of, of places that um, are industrial parks and places they have to, to go through. So thank you for inviting me, and thank you for organizing it. I think it made a difference to people really understanding. Yes. This isn't just a once, once every blue moon, as they say. Every single day, students have to get up and, and get themselves to school, walking three miles in both directions. We know many areas of the state where Kids get ride to school if it's down the street or um, their parents will take their kids to a bus stop and wait with them till the bus comes. It just shouldn't be such a difference, it seems to me, for students that we want to be the leaders that you want to be someday. Yes. So, yeah, I grew up so in Bernie, Richmond, what's, Richmond, Rhode Island. I grew up in there. Richmond, in the in, country. In the country. And um, a very pleasant road to my school, only a mile away. I had a bus from first grade right through high school. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'd skip the bus so I could be late, you know. Mm -hmm. High school kids would have some fun, like in, in May. But um, I never experienced that. And for people to walk and actually feel the weather, and that weather wasn't so bad, it was about mm -hmm. 35 Fantastic. degrees. Today would have been different at uh, 28 degrees, but there are good people that did that. You know, I really, you know, that's a point I want to make, that people want to do the right thing. There's so many things that need to be done, as you know, from your vantage point with Kids Count. I mean, there are lots of things we need to tackle. But this is an obvious one. You know, how can you expect kids to learn uh, if they can't get to school? You know, wh why that extra barrier, you know? Especially if, if Providence is an outlier, unusual, then it's so obvious that it's got to be corrected. And I think the work and the research and in, in the in the Providence Student Union, you know, organizing themselves to make this point, helped good people make the right decision. And mm -hmm. I heard last week from the uh, the uh, director of operations for the school department that he is pledged to find the money somehow. He might need some help from the legislature. I don't know, but it's a big school budget. We're talking about a million and a half dollars to make transportation available to those students that live between two, two and three miles. And it's about 2,000 students. So mm -hmm. this affects 2,000 kids, you know, mm -hmm. like Diane and her uh, colleagues. So every once in a while, there's, you can, you know, there's, a, there's something that presents itself at a moment in time, and you can bring people's attention to it, and you can really affect the change. And that, that was fun to be part of. And thank you for being part of it, too. Well, as Diane was saying, it was, um, <clears throat> it was a really good way to sh shine a spotlight on the issue Superintendent Lucy was there. Um, the head of the school board policy committee was there. Um, other school board members, the head of operations that you're talking about saying, um, not, not just that individual, but others saying, let's sit down and figure this out, as well as the chairman of the RIPTA board, um, Mayor Avedizian, and some key officials from RIPTA, as well as several reporters that walked along. So I think what I heard at the end was, it is an issue about money in a very tight time of tight budgets. But I think everyone was beginning to agree that um, with all of the money we're spending on education, it doesn't make common sense to have a barrier to kids even getting to take advantage of right. the other educational dollars that are being spent in order to open educational doors for our students. So in terms of um, next steps, and I think that um, I want to say, Diane, that you had some good comments um, in the press, because I think that you you indicated that you know that there's some difficult choices that have to be made, but this is one that you want to be made for the benefit of students. 
So what are some of your next steps that you have planned? So this Wednesday, we have a follow-up meeting where we will meet with the people that did the participated in the Walk in Our Shoes Challenge. And we already caused awareness on them, but we want this to be a possible solution. We want them to give us the solution. Like We're going to ask them what are they going to do to help us. Mm -hmm. So this is a more serious meeting. And we're also going to ask them how did they feel for the walk. Yeah. Yes. So it will be a way to kind of keep that that energy going. Yes. And that focus on the issue. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe you'll look at some different pathways to, you know, getting to yes on this issue, how different other choices could be made with some of the funding for something else that could go for this, or um, how you could deal with partners at the state legislature. All sorts of things might be on the table. And are you planning to go to that meeting on yes, I March will be 5th? There. The PSU members are going to be there. Because you're hosting the meeting. Yes. <laughs> which is great. And um, at that time, um, you're going to be just really drawing on the sort of the new, new awareness of the issue that you've created and really looking around the table to see who can play what role. Is that what you have in mind for Wednesday as well? Bernie, are you planning yeah, to I be there? I'm planning to be there as well um, as members of the school department and uh, rip the representation because, you know, everyone knows they have a part to play in this. There are some potential solutions that have to do with uh, the changing the startup school so that the sort of surge capacity for RIPTA is, is, is not as bad. So there's some concerns about whether RIPTA can handle all these new ri riders uh, at that time, point in time. They would have to expand their fleet. Each bus, RIPTA bus costs $496,000. So, you know, they're concerned about money. But I think it really prompts to me, and I, I know you know this, that a bigger societal value about how we value what's happening with our, our children. And, you know, where is the money going? Um, as you know, our school uh, facilities uh, need about a billion seven hundred million dollars, according to the State Department of Education, to be brought up to speed with sort of a you know, what's needed for a proper education. And um, there's not a lot of willingness, you know, I think, on, on the part of our, you know, political leadership at the moment to really tackle that. But it needs to be tackled. Mm -hmm. You know, all this investment in teacher training and evaluation and all these, all these tools and techniques are increasingly be, are in, in environments where, the, where the, the ceilings are literally falling in on the, on the kids. You can't drink the water in some of these schools. I mean, it's really bad. Serve Rodan does a lot of work in these schools. That's why I know we bring volunteers in and we, you know, we paint, we try to improve. But some, some of these places need new heating systems, plumbing, major infrastructure. So this issue sort of reminds people that, you know, we got to take care of our kids. Mm -hmm. You know, we really do from K through 12 and then beyond. And if you have kids, you know it is beyond because college, and graduate school and everything else. But it's really, um, we have to kind of wake up our uh, leadership around what's really important. We talk about economic development. If we have kids dropping out of high school, that's the worst thing we can do for our future, mm -hmm. in their future. You know, you know this. Well, it, it totally yeah. is. And what, what I said when I had the opportunity to go on the walk with you is that you have to make policy decisions based on what you'd want for your own kids. And exactly. there's no question that uh, a lot of the viewers walking, uh, viewing, when they think about their own kids and sending them out to walk three miles through city streets every day, it's not something that would be acceptable. So we need to get our heads together and figure out a solution to this quickly so that people like Diane can continue on. So what are your dreams for yourself? Do you have any idea mm -hmm. well, what you might want to do with your, your life? Yes. Well, my main goal is to go to college. I want to be a technical engineer. Wow. Yeah, I really like math and science, so I want to become someone in life and graduate high school, oh. especially with good grades, and I hope we can solve this. I know we're going to solve this, and I'll get my good grades. And if this issue were to um, come to fruition, thanks to your work, Diane, and the work of your fellow students and the Providence Student Union and others, um, I can see by your face that you would be putting the trans new transportation policy to good use in your life. Yes. Um, I will. Um, and, what, and tell me about that. What would it, how would it make a difference in your day-to-day -day life? Well, I'll get to, get to school early and have no more absences.
and I'll get my grades up also because they're not in a very good status right now. <laughs> now, are there any other stories without um, um, infringing on anyone's confidentiality that you might want to share? Um, if there are parents working two jobs with different shifts, different siblings going to different schools that you've heard of are an extra level of complexity as kids try to get to school? Well, um, one of the PSU members, he was telling his story one time. Um, he, live, he lives in Hartford somewhere. I don't know where exactly. And once Hartford he had, Park area, yeah, you mean? Yeah. He had to walk to school and he got frostbite in his hands and his toes. And until today, when it's very cold, he still feels the pain. He's the one that was scared of, of the gangbangers because, yes. And, well, I don't know his whole story. I don't remember it. But it was, you know, his health was endangered. Mm -hmm. And, Bernie, I know you followed along a young man mm -hmm. who was a very impressive young man who mm -hmm. took you on a walk of his own mm -hmm. from his house to school. Yeah. And you were able to do a little video. Tell me about that story. Well, you know, I was with Aaron uh, Regenberg with the Promise Student Union. Uh, he was bringing the students together every Tuesday to talk about things. And, and so I said, well, I would like to walk with someone. And there were a few volunteers. And then uh, it worked out that Darren um, was available. And he actually lives 1.7 miles from school. So this new policy won't even help him. Mm -hmm. uh, it helped if he was in Springfield, where they have 1.5. And uh, But anyway... He, he, at the beginning of Reservoir, actually going down Reservoir Avenue all the way to Central, and, um, you know, his, his mom leaves the house at 6.30 to take two buses to get to her job in Warwick because, you know, they don't have uh, a car. And, you know, that's what he has to do. He has to walk every single day. And um, the day that we walked was th January 30th. It was 11 degrees out at 7.20. And, um, you know, I, I walked with him. And because he walked with me, I said, listen, today, you're not going to, I'm going to give you a ride. And I also bought him breakfast. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. But uh, he has to do it every day. Yeah. And it's painful. He doesn't wear his best jacket because he's afraid it'll get stolen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's um, really tough. It, and it puts these, you know, these uh, uh, young people at such a disadvantage to have to arrive to school cold, wet, feeling miserable. Mm -hmm. His story was that he, he arrived last year after walking through a foot of snow. He had a high fever. He had to go home. He was out for three more days. Mm -hmm. He got really ill from that uh, weather experience. And that's not unusual, right? I mean, mm -hmm. People get sick from being out there. Yes. The elements. Yeah. And there are students who are out there not missing a day of school, walking in both directions every day, and the toll that that takes. Mm -hmm. So as you look toward working on other issues, um, I assume, first of all, you want to follow this one through to a su successful ending, yes. which will be a very happy day, right? And um, I assume that will get your spirit up for additional issues yes, so well. that would affect um, improved education for young people. Mm -hmm. So are you divided up into committees at Providence Student Union? Yes, there's um, one chapter in every school, mm -hmm. and we all have different issues we're trying to solve. Now, before you got involved in Providence Student Union, had you had any experience with public speaking or <laughs> speaking to the media or any of that good stuff? No. And no. were you nervous at first? Yes, I was. And um, mm -hmm. do you feel pretty excited that you're able to work on an issue and really learn about it? Yes. And be a good spokesperson for it? Yes. I mean, I believe we could change this, so I'm mm -hmm. very happy. Well, it sounds like from your enthusiasm and your... Um, intelligence that you are a great representative of this issue yes. and that you're going to be able to apply that kind of skill to other issues that you care about. Aren't you hopeful when you see someone like yeah, Diane I'm hopeful. get involved? I'm also thinking that don't rule out uh, public office in the future for yourself. You know? <laughs> okay. Take a few political science courses, you know, when you go to college <laughs> and it'll come in handy. You'll remember this experience. You're in the 10th grade. You got you got plenty of time. Well, Bernie, yes. on this issue and Diane, it sounds like next steps are some very constructive meetings mm -hmm. to really sit yes. down and put a lot of good people's heads together. Yeah. I think that the walk did give a sense of momentum, that this is something that people do want to solve and solve quickly um, with people playing different roles and having different authority to make that change. Um, That's right. So having everybody from the superintendent to the head of RIPTA to the head of operations at PPSD and mm -hmm. great student leaders and um, people running for elected office all helps. Um, it's gotten great coverage in the media. Hopefully that will continue. Mm -hmm. And um, Bernie, um, 
I think that um, good voices out there can lend some mm -hmm. support to this issue if there are viewers that want to just let their elected officials and others know. That's mm -hmm. always good. That's right. And if we could have just a final word from you, Bernie, about Serve Rhode Island in case mm -hmm. people want to get involved and t tell us quickly what it is. Serve Rhode Island, is. we're the uh, state uh, center for volunteerism. We're also the administrator of the AmeriCorps program. But really what I want to say is that you, Elizabeth, and uh, with Rhode Island Kids Count, brought a lot of credibility to the issue at the policy meeting and you in other meetings so don't count yourself out of that picture you're, you're front and center and oh, thank thanks. you very much you know. well and, and i'll be there at, at the next thank meeting you. but i think serve rhode island is another great organization that people can get a hold of bernie right he's often as you know you've probably seen him do this um diane he's doing call outs for volunteers for yeah. lots of good things to help our Snow community shoveling. <laughs> yeah, be a better place. So yeah. it's our, our public service um, entity in Rhode Island and it's it's volunteerism. Fun. So yeah, thank you for what you do as well. And Diane, You're if welcome. you have a last word to say either to your fellow students or other people who are concerned about the issue, what would it be? Well, this problem shouldn't be something we have to tell people about because it's state of the obvious. I mean, we don't have to struggle to get to school. And us shouldn't be denied an education just because we can't get to school. And we're going to win this for the students. I'm positive. Well, that is a great last word. I want to thank you for your leadership and all you do with the Providence Student Union. It was great to be on the walk with you. I think there will be a solution that can come up with an answer to this problem sooner rather than later so that all students can have the same access to a public education that is their right to have in our state and in our country. And so thank you for all of your leadership. I also want to thank you, Bernie, for doing a lot of the data homework on your own and really trying to um, get some information in front of people quickly. And your colleagues at the Mayor's Children and Youth Cabinet who've been really great on the issue of chronic absence, Jenny Johnson and mm -hmm. Carrie Feliz. This is all part of that solution as well. Indeed. So we will stay tuned, and hopefully on a, an Access Rhode Island program very soon, we'll be able to celebrate some success. So thank yes. you for being on the program, and I want to thank you for joining us at Access Rhode Island for its program, Kids Count.